Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the UBC Learning Circle um, that happens to be situated at Musqueam, um, Squamish, and Slaywood Sioux Territory in downtown Vancouver. And we welcome you here. I don't get um, to sit in this uh, space very often. My name is Leah Walker, and I am of Nakatma English and Danish ancestry. And uh, it's always a privilege to be here. My role um, is Associate Director of Education of the UBC Center for Excellence of Indigenous Health, and the Learning Circle is part of that. And so um, often, it's my team that um, is in the front of the camera. So Davina and Catherine and Lena, and uh, sometimes other people. So it's really fantastic to be in front of the camera again and to sit with you in an area that's really exciting, that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, so I am sitting next to the lovely Michelle Olson. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. And she's a member of the Trondek Wichin First Nation, which is, for those of us that don't know, up around Dawson in the Yukon and the artistic director of Raven Spirit Dance, which is situated here around Vancouver. Her work as performer and creator embraces the arenas of dance, choreography, theater, storytelling, and community development. I'm excited about hearing about all of this. She received a Bachelor of University Studies at the University of New Mexico and continued her dance training at the Aboriginal Arts Program at Banff Center Oh, so you must have worked with some really great people. Mm -hmm. And as an ensemble member with Full Circle First Nations Performance. Michelle is also a certified movement analyst in the band Bartonyev, and I don't know that, and somatic studies. So I'm excited to hear about that as well. So Michelle is going to speak with you and share a PowerPoint and she will also answer questions throughout. So if you have a question on video conference, um, just unmute your mic uh, and wave. So I'd like to just welcome those that are out on video conference. I see that Kiss Fiox is there right now, and there may be more coming, and um, Huiston, which is in Lillooet, Lillooet territory, which I'm really, I've been there, and it's so beautiful, and it's so great. To, um, to see you over there, yay! And we have some guests on webinar too, so um, I'm excited about that. So please feel free to ask any questions at any point. And today we'll be going for about an hour, so we'll be ending at 11.15 today, so just to let you know how we're keeping time. But I think that we'll be able to get through a lot. Yeah, so welcome, great. Michelle. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining joining me in this talk. This is the first time I've ever done it in this format, so I'll try to ease in and and I'll be okay with it. So hi, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so I am, uh, my name is Michelle Olson, and I am the artistic director of Raven Spirit Dance in Vancouver. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about my background and how I've been pretty much dancing all my life. Um, when I went to University of Alberta, I discovered contemporary dance. I took, um, it was a, it was an after school kind of dance group, amateur dance group that I, I started dancing with. And a part of that, we had a show and a part of the show is you were given free time to choreograph, you were given dancers, you were given costumes, and then you were given two nights in the theater. And that was kind of the bug that bit me. I was really interested in, um, I just got all this time and was in the studio and was creating. So I kind of turned, I, I shifted gears and I wanted to become a dancer and a choreographer. I went to the University of New Mexico uh, to study dance. And part of the reason why I went down there is they have a Pueblo social dance class, so you st uh, I was able to study with an elder from the San Juan Pueblo, so it was really, wow. really amazing, um, and wow. the great thing about that university is you could take the course over and over again and still get credit, <laughs> so I took the course, 
twice with um, Andrew Garcia, and he would take me up to the Pueblo, and uh, we saw the buffalo dance and the deer dance, and I just would be immersed in the First Nations culture down there, as well as doing my contemporary dance training. After that, I came across the Aboriginal Dance Intensive at the Banff Centre, and at that time, Alejandro Ronserio was the artistic director, Mari Mumford was running the program, and that was the first time I really saw um, how a program integrated my contemporary dance training with First Nations culture and First Nations dance. And it was amazing, amazing summer. I we danced with Inuit, Inuvaluit dancers, Mohawk dancers, Cree dancers, and myself, the Yukon. There was another Yukon um, dancer uh, in the program, and I just was exposed to all these different people from these different um, communities. And I really, I feel like that program made me want to create my own company. So. From there, I met Margot Kane there, and then I followed her <laughs> to Vancouver, and I was in uh, with Full Circle First Nations performance. I uh, did the show, uh, The River Home, and then I did a Full Circle ensemble training for two years, and I started my company. <sighs> and the company is really about just um, giving me space to to follow my own interests and as a dancer and a choreographer. It was important for me too when I first came to Vancouver 14 years ago to really see more visibility of Aboriginal people in the dance community, in the mainstream dance community. There was glimpses of us, but I felt like there wasn't an organization that was actively um, creating space for Aboriginal artists to come, to train, and also to have work on stage. Um, it's also really interesting too, I, we'll go back to um, my connection to my community. So I'm Tron Dequichin from Dawson City. And around the same time I started my company, for some reason my, my First Nation built a theater, a 90 seat theater, it's wow. a small little stage, but they had no one to program in it. And so I started programming work there and I started creating work in my community so as my company was building then the community was uh, the community was supporting me by offering me a venue to perform uh, my one piece that we started with Kimberly Tucson um, we started when the center the company started and the center was just starting that was 12 years ago so I developed that piece and performed it over like 200 times and performed it at the Yukon Art Center across Canada and Montreal and uh, Regina and um, in Vancouver. So it's been a really important part of um, my, my development as a, an artist is my connection to my community. Um, the, it's interesting because of Dawson City, um, and the history of Dawson City and the gold rush, things shifted quite quickly um, when the gold rush hit. And there's, we don't really have much of our, um, well, I would say traditional dances, we're slowly trying to learn that back. But the chief at, our, at the time, Chief Isaac, um, decided that he would take the songs and dances to Alaska to the elders for safekeeping and that was over a hundred years ago. So now since, um, since the 90s, we've been starting to learn our songs and our dances back. So I think the reason why I come to the work and to my sense of identity through contemporary dance is because we, we don't really have that layer of understanding of traditional dance. It, so, oh, there's someone else joining us, that's great. Welcome, Adam Slade. So nice to see you. We're just, um, Michelle is just talking about her genesis of dance, her beginning. Go back on. I don't it takes so long for it to come on. That thing Can you get your mic out, There's a little red microphone. Can you move, mute your mic? Oh, that's so cute. Oh, 
Discovery Channel scan first. We don't want to. They don't. Uh, not Can you do it? it? We can't do it. So, Adams Lake, you have a mic on your um, table. How used our TV and messed up the settings? So, you. Okay. 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 Great. Um, so I think uh, because of that real drastic shift in, um, I, well, loss of culture and then regaining of culture because of the gold rush, there are a lot of contemporary artists in our community. There's a lot of contemporary um, painters, visual artists, um, video videographers, and then there's myself, the choreographer. Nice. Uh, and then I just wanted to go through, um, so this idea of, you know, not having connection or actual um, knowledge or being passed down verbally, your stories or your history, I believe like when we tap into our bodies in a deep way that all that information is still there. And that that's a way we can carry our culture forward. Uh, I just I wrote something here, and I just want to read it because it feels like it's um, it resonates of why I do what I do. My firm belief that our bodies, bones, and blood and tissue are our cultural inheritance. That by tapping into our bodies in a deep way, physically, and in my case as a contemporary artist, metaphorically. We can uncover wisdom and our inherited perspective that was given to us by our ancestors. So this idea that my eyes are my eyes, but my eyes are also my grandmother's eyes, my grandfather's eyes, that my body is actually, I, it's housing so many generations and so much knowledge, and that if we are able to um, tap into that, that we can we can source source our our history. I'll give just a quick example. Um, I was working on a piece, Songs of Short Show, and we were we so were you working on a, a dance piece okay. called Songs of Short Show, which is songs of Big Bear, and we were developing a part of the work in Vancouver, and we came up with a story around this person that this old woman that gets lost in um, in the tundra and that she is picked up by the caribou and she turns into a caribou and when we performed it in our community in Dawson City an elder came up to me and said oh where'd you hear that story I said well we made that story up and she said no that's not a made-up story that's a story from here but it's an it was an old man that went out into the into the tundra and turned into a caribou. So I, that was a really interesting moment for me of just how we can discover our stories um, through our bodies. Uh, I'll go through our um, the pictures that I have of the dance, so just so you can see. I need to move back a little bit. Is this, I, I think we didn't move it back to the... I'm just going to have to scroll maybe. Oh, to, yeah. Or maybe here, I could go here. I'll just do this. There. So Raven Spirit Dance creates and produces contemporary dance that is rooted in Aboriginal worldviews and honors the communities and artists we work with. We share stories root through Indigenous perspectives and practices and create a platform for others to do the same. And the next page. This is one of our first pieces based on a traditional story of bear and raven fighting over the sun. And the next one, this is Songs of Charcho. And this is in the theater in Dawson City. Being taken. Since it's such a small theater, we do a lot of projection yeah. <laughs> to feel like you're in a bigger place. Nice though. Yeah. And this is still songs with the caribou images in the back. They're growing some uh, caribou horns there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is my grandmother 
that's a picture of my grandmother projected. Oh, her face in the background. Yeah, okay. you can see that, and that's me. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Kluktega Nache, Salmon Girl Dreaming. Look at that beautiful peak. Can you tell me about this web structure? It's gorgeous. It's, um, it's a fish spine. Wow. So this fish spine is like the transporter of this young girl to go visit her grandmother. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, she turns into a fish and she travels to the ocean. There's some other images here of the fish spine. And then this is uh, the Yukon River, mm, yeah, nice. and and then that's me, and this is in the the uh, theater, and it's almost like a, I like the image of I'm almost an island, like the island, yeah, there's Dog Island right there, and then there's some more fish pictures. And who's the picture of the woman in the back? That's my niece. Okay. Yeah, Rosalind. So really connected Rosie. to your whole family. Yeah. And relatives. That's so lovely. It was really great. What we did um, was we went to the local pool. She's a really good swimmer. Uh -huh. So it's actually an image of her swimming underwater. Oh, my goodness. And um, so we had lots of fun. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I just love the multimedia aspect of it. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. And then Tawan, which is, so now that we're on um, Squamish, Musqueam, tsleil territory, yeah. it was very important for me to work with uh, those First Nations. And I work specifically with Bob Baker. Okay. And Tawan means illumination in Squamish. And we went to Coal Harbor, which is a very high upper end part of town. And Bob would talk about how there used to be very big maple trees. Uh -huh. And they would hunt for deer there. Really? Yeah. It's hard to even imagine that space like that. Now. So we kind of reclaimed it a bit, right? We they came in on a canoe. Yeah. And um, and basically, when you do this kind of work, it's site specific. Very so nice. you have a group of people following you, and then you run into people who are unexpected audience members, oh, yeah. and that can be fun. Sometimes, you know, people think you're nuts, but some people are really drawn in, too. And this is a solo piece, Evening in Paris, that I did with um, Muriel Miguel from New York. Wow. She is um, artistic director of Spider Woman Theatre, and uh, she's the first Aboriginal women's theatre collective in North America. So she's amazing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, New York seems to be where all those great wacky places are sometimes. yeah okay and those that's evening in Paris so what was the story about this piece this story was uh, following the life of uh, Molly Spotted Elk who was a vaudeville dancer in Paris she was Penobscot First okay. Nation yeah and she just really seemed it was like a Josephine Baker where she would go over to Paris and she would get her headdress on and her skimpy little bikini on and oh dance around. Oh, my gosh. And it was, yeah, very exotic. Um, you know, they loved it back then. So, but she did, she was always wanting to be a writer, and she came back home. And I think she struggled with mental illness, and she had a daughter. Um, but she has a very fascinating story about, uh, she, she went to university, mm -hmm. and this is at the turn of the century, so... For an Aboriginal woman to kind of be able yes. to um, go to university, go to university, and she was in film *Silent en Enemy*, and that was one of the first films with Aboriginal people in it. It was just kind of honoring her, and then also acknowledging how she really struggled too. And that's still part of that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, there's a, in the back, there's a crazy little, I know on that right projection. picture, yeah, <laughs> turn Paris. Right. <laughs> okay. Is that a fish? No, it's my shoe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a fish. That's and Gathering name. Light um, is a recent piece, and it's about a seed turning into a flower. 
the whole piece is about that. It's about 50 minutes. Pro the process of transformation. Who's your photographer? Is it the same one? Or is it uh, this is Chris Randall, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's great for dance yeah. pictures, isn't he? And this is, there's Bob Baker in the back. And this is really um, Frost Exploding Trees Moon. This is about um, a woman setting up her her home, her mobile home, which is two sticks and a sheet, mm -hmm. on her trap line or in the environment. And this one we got to do on the land, which is great. We do it in the theater, but this is up at the, um, what is it, the, the dam up there by the two sisters. Cleveland Dam. Cleveland Dam. Yeah. Where's Cleveland so. Dam? It's nor uh Capilano. Oh Capilano. Yeah. yeah. Oh up there. Yeah. Okay, so Squamish. Yeah. And Squamish. Beautiful. Oh, and those are the lions. Wait to the far yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, and the, and traditionally they're actually called the two sisters. The two sisters. Yeah. There you go. See? Thank yeah. you for that. Uh, I won't look at your little yeah. 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 Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. it's Hoisten. I wonder can you Hi, do a full Hoisten? screen? Can you do full screen so we can sure. see the pictures? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you see them now? Yes. Okay, yes, a little please. bit clearer. Thank you. Sorry about that. So this is frost exploding trees moon. Okay, so it's totally different in the landscape, isn't it? Yeah. It's very nice. In and the I land, did this on one with um, Floyd Favel from uh, Saskatchewan, and it was about um, looking at the way our aunties and grandmothers are in the land and their body positions in relationship to being in the bush. And yeah, it was good. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. I had a few elders come to the show in Dawson, and <laughs> I asked. Percy. I'm like, oh, how'd you like the show? He's like, I liked your moves. And um, it was good. You know, it's nice to kind of know that it connects with with the, the elders in my community that live off the land and know it well. Yeah. So, and they could see themselves on stage. That's really important to me. Uh, this is another uh, site-specific work. It's a Crab Park. Yeah. And again, it's talking about, uh, we did this work um, it's a bit complicated because it was a pod play, site-specific work. So there was a pod play. You'd w wear your iPod, right. and you'd walk the streets, and there was a play going in into your um, into your brain, into your mind, as you're walking. It tells you where to cross and where to go. And as you journey through um, the streets of – it's around Main Street mm – -hmm. you come to this place where the dancers are. And the story is about the Great Fire – of Vancouver mm -hmm. and the story of the women's paddle song from the Squamish First Nation because what happened when the fire started there was a big gathering over at the church on the Squamish territory mm -hmm. and they saw the fire and it was the women that really pushed the community to get into their canoes and come across Wow! so the women came across gathered survivors from the fire and then paddled them back to the North Shore, and out of that journey came the the women's paddle song. So it was a song that they sang to soothe the people that had just been, you know, trying to save their lives from this huge fire that I guess burnt down. This church? That church? You mean the the church burnt down? Yeah. No, the whole city burnt down. Wow. Yeah, everything was gone. It was a small city, but everything yeah, at was that just time. yeah right. because it was all logged and, right. and there was I guess there was a lots of. Um, oh, okay. So I was imagining that church, but you're actually saying from the North Shore there. Yeah, came they came back. across. Okay. They gathered people and then they went yeah. across. So this right. was just um, being at that point where they would have would have met, and the idea of this of an Aboriginal woman and a non-Aboriginal woman meeting, and the trust that they had to have to share the canoe and, and to um, do the work. And then, yeah, there's some pictures of peace. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I love the water. Yeah, we'll just move <laughs> I back. I love to the it. water. Yeah. Um, and the and the the wet dresses. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Do you walk into the water? Yeah, they run into the water. Wow. Yeah. And then just to quote, it seems to be the farther we reach out, the deeper we understand home. Mm -hmm. And then those are the credits. J. Armitage and Chris Randall were all the photos and our performers. Nice. So that's kind of, uh, that was done for our 10th anniversary photo retrospective. We had a gala event and we had this on the wall. So it's pretty much sums up everything I've done wow, <laughs> until now. Fantastic. Yeah, I know some of those dancers, performers. In fact, I worked with Tasha Faye. Oh, yeah. Kathleen oh, great. <laughs> in a oh. theater piece many years ago, or theater dance family from. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Fantastic. So we can probably turn this off now. Okay. Yeah. I'll just chat her. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Wow, that's amazing. I just love how you're so rooted in the land and those stories that's just so lovely it's so lovely Thank you. can we just take a moment and invite costume or costumes invite questions or or thoughts from people that are on um, webinar or on video conference it would be great to hear if you have any thoughts even though maybe you didn't get to, to see all of those images but the ideas of some of those Images are, are fantastic. I particularly love um, the one with your grandmother mm -hmm. and then the one with your niece on there, like that intergenerational connection. It's beautiful. Hello. Hello, Hoiston. Hoiston. Um, in terms of your shows, do you have. Um, I did not. An itinerary for um, like summer shows, so the, the the kids and the elders can go and see. I think um, it it depends. Mostly, what happens with us in the summertime is we go up north, and I do my um, I do my show in Dawson City. Um, there sometimes we've been trying to tour. We toured a, a long time ago, and we toured all over BC, but that was about 12 years ago. So it's a bit of a challenge to get um, the funds together to actually get out and and get to the communities, but it's something that we're always trying to look look towards. Uh, a great time to come down um, is the Talking Stick Festival. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard about the Talking Stick Festival. Uh, it happens in February. And it's a really wonderful time. We often perform at the Talking Stick Festival. And there's theater, there's storytelling, there's show for kids, there's a powwow. Um, there's so much happening during that time that that would be a great time to come down um, and see and see some of the work that's happening. I know there's a, a program. And if you're really interested in trying to bring artists to the community, um, because sometimes that's it's a nice thing to do to be able to do that. There's an organization called Made in BC, and you can uh, contact them and just see if there's any programs that they have to encourage work to come to the community. I know uh, Dancers of Dom Lahamed. That one. Oh. Yeah, in next year they're going to 14 different communities in BC. So maybe if you want to find out where they are going to be, um, that would be uh, like maybe it's it's in a community that's close to you, and see if you can connect with uh, uh, the people that are bringing them out. What was the name of the group? Dancers of Dom Lahamed. I oh. have um, I do have a. a sheet that I can put up at the end with their uh, email address, uh, website address. Oh, that would be good, yeah. yes. Yeah, great. Yeah, and they, and they do lots of stuff that's very, um, I've noticed them, I've seen them a few times, they've done stuff that's been very um, supporting of community, um, so they perform, but then they do some dances where they invite people to participate with yeah. them, so it's, it's really nice. Are there any other questions before I move on? Sounds good. 
Okay. So, yeah, that's me <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> um, I'm going to just move on. I know part of the um, talk was about the importance of movement and dance. And this kind of moves into my certified movement analyst training, mm -hmm. which is my Laban and Vartaniev studies training. Right. Uh, and I won't go into the history of that because it gets, it's pretty dense. But I in essence, Laban was a movement theorist in Germany. Um, at the turn of the century who wanted to define, to be able to describe movement. And through that, and through the work with Barteniev, Barteniev worked with him and then brought his work over, we're starting to uncover all these um, things about movement and dance and our, own, and our own expression of ourselves through movement. I, I believe like this work that Laban did was really affected us on a whole level, like I think dance therapy really came out of that movement and um, understanding ourselves as moving people. But to say to say that, I think we we've understood this in the indigenous communities for a very long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, what I'm about to go into is also understanding the idea that our traditional dance supports our our, our development as. A, through movement and our expression. But first I'll go through um, just a little bit of uh, ideas around the importance of movement. So I really believe our birthright is to be able to express ourselves, our inner experiences to our outer world. And our body is a vehicle to do this. So we connect our inner world to our outer world. And I th sometimes there's the question of, well, what is our inner world? I think of it as our soul body, our soul. It's our memories, our thoughts, our feelings, and desires and aspirations. And our soul body is uniquely us, but it is also our ancestors' body, too. So I, I think it's important to acknowledge that we are who we are, but then we are also so much connected to who we have been in the past. So in yoga they call it prana, which is life force energy. And in a way, what the pathways in our body to allow us to express ourselves, um, they move through the body and into the world. So there's, um, out of this understanding, there's an idea and they call it, the, it's not an idea, it's an actuality. It's a developmental movement patterns. And these are the patterns that are the blueprint for movement, for expression. So we get these patterns in utero when we're in, um, in our mother's womb. We start to develop them. And then once we come out, we're birthed, we, have, uh, we develop our sense of relationship to gravity and to earth. And then we have these patterns inside of us that are the building blocks that allow us to move in the world, to see the world. And then we can start interacting with the world. So if you watch a baby from, you know, when they're born up to the first two years, they're all about movement patterns. They're all about um, moving in a way to help them you know, grab the ball that's over there or to reach high for a toy that they want or to see their mother or their father. It's all about connecting their experience to the outer world. And it's, it's very rarefied. They really see it because um, they're learning those things, like learning how to stand and walk. So it's these patterns that we've developed that are what moves our energy through, right? So our emotions, thoughts physical sensations can move through us in a healthy way if we can connect to these patterns. So before I start talking about them, we're going to experience them. And so this is a, a Martha Eddy gave, uh, I took a workshop and this is a movement series. You can do this sitting down or you can do it standing up. And it's good because I can see you and I know whether you're doing it or not. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to do anything. <laughs> so, and it's it's really quick. 
so it won't take long. Just make sure you have a little bit of space in front of, if you're sitting down in front of you. And just take a moment to check in with how you're feeling. And witness how you feel in your body and witness your awareness. Place your hands on your belly. We'll start. Take three deep breaths with your hands on your belly. So breathe in. And exhale. Breathe in again. And exhale. And last time. Now just squeeze your, your arms with your hand. Just kind of squeeze your arms and your hand. Yeah, good, great. And squeeze your legs, just kind of waking up the sensation of being held. And then you're going to expand. So take an inhale, expand. And try to reach your legs out and your and then come back in. And if you're standing, I'll stand up till you can come up here. And then bring it all into the center. Let's do that one more time. Now relax your head, so drop your chin to your chest, and then bring your head up. And as you drop your chin to your chest, curl your tailbone forward, so you're making a C shape with your spine. Do that a couple times. And if you're standing, you can actually just even drop down a little bit rolling up and down the spine. Good. Good. Now this one, place your hands on um, in front of you or you can place your hands on your your thighs and push up and if you want to stand too, you just push into your legs and straighten your back out. Come up. And then just push into your legs to come up. One more time. So if you're standing, now we'll move on to, you can balance on your one leg and have one leg up. It's hard to see. <laughs> so just one leg up, can you see? <laughs> Computer's here, I'll just do this. There, like that. Yeah. So your left leg and your left arm are up and just try to find a balance point. Good. And then switch. And let's do that again, each side. Last time. Okay, and standing, we're just going to hit the opposite hand to the opposite knee. So you're gonna cross over midline yeah good yeah 
and we'll go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Great. Let's sit down. And then, again, take a moment to check in how you're feeling. Witness how you feel in your body and your awareness. Um, does anyone want to share with what, it has anything shifted or do you have any observations about that exercise? I feel better. Yeah. I feel definitely more awake. Yeah. Sure. Ditto. Definitely more awake. Great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. So what that, that exercise did was take you through the developmental movement patterns. And Martha Eddy, who developed this um, series, she uses them in schools. So before children sit down at their desk, she gets them to move through this pattern. So what, what you're doing is, because you're awakening these patterns, you're awakening your nervous system, and you're, it's easier to transmit information from your brain to your body, your body to your brain. I, I have um, some images I want to share with you. Oh, I have to type in a password. Oh, it's right there. Indigenous okay. 2013. Not a lie. Okay. Okay. So, and then I just go down here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's this one. And then how do I make that bigger so they can see it? Um. Here. Where's the pictures that you have of the beach there? Oh, that's at Crab Park. Right, right around Stanley Park, yeah. right? It's, Crab Park, actually, it's at the base of Main Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's not down in Vancouver? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Full screen mode? Okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. So this is um, kind of what we move through. And when we first, really what I find most important, when I teach even my dance classes, we're on the floor for maybe 50% of the time, um, developing our connection to earth and to gravity. Then the first um, thing that we moved through was breath, breathe, like one of the first patterns. <laughs> And then the next one is navel radiation. We did do the um, where we clasped our um, hands, and that's more about tactile awakening. And then we went into navel radiation, which is core distal. So we reached out into a big axe, and we brought everything into the center. And you can see, like, the starfish, the sun, and this woman up here is doing the same thing, navel radiation. Head-tail connection. We moved our head and our tail. Finding our fish spine, right? There's a wonderful picture of a fish. Exactly that. And then this person's spine. And then we move through an upper lower patterning, which is that's when we pressed on our, our um, thighs and we pushed from our upper and connected with our lower and we pushed from our upper. So that's like the frog that's leaping. And then I found a picture of someone to a high jump because she pushes from her upper to reach, uh, pushes from her lower to reach through the upper. Body half patterning. <laughs> I found <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and also the salamander moves like that too. So same arm, same leg. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, and that's why the Superman sometimes he has another one, but I found that one. <laughs> and the last one is cross lateral patterning. So the cat's cross lateral, and then you can see a great one with the baby. Oh, yeah. See how her her left her right foot is connected to her left reach, and it goes through the body, and then 
classic sign of walking. Yeah. So I'll turn that off. Escape. Escape. Great. And then we can go back. Great. Um, so those are, that's kind of the blueprint of, of how we move. Um, there's something to talk about now a little bit about blocks to movement expression and trauma. And I feel that this, this in a way in our communities um, plays a big part in, uh, well, because the child develops and learns the patterns and learns who they are in their home. When they're taken away to residential school and experience abuse and trauma, that these patterns can get blocked and our natural way of growing as a, as a, a human being is, is um, challenged because we have such challenging situations to deal with. And, um, I think the deep patterning that happens in childhood is 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 one of the things that residential school had really um, fractured. And we talk a lot about I, I like I think that's the base of it, right? If if you're not able to process information, process your own experiences, then um, and then even not having the base to process the idea of who you are or your culture. Um, it's just, it's really hard. And so I, I feel that the trauma really shuts down your system of expression, which can lead to many things that, that are challenging. And I think we all know what those are, right? We all know, um, you know, that has been affected by our, like, post-traumatic stress. And we've all have aunties, uncles, elders, even like my husband was part of the 60s scoop, so he has his own trauma around that of um, what the system did to him to shift those things. And so for me, really reclaiming identity and reclaiming culture is about reclaiming our moving bodies. Mm-hmm. And that's why, um, yeah, I think that's really important. And then also, too, like if we just look beyond um, just that piece, like our school system and our work situation sometimes limit our movement and expression. Their cultural habits like of computers and mm-hmm. video games and handheld devices really limit our expression of um, movement expression. And also cultural and family norms sometimes as youth too, you're always pushing boundaries to kind of be able to find your voice and find your full voice. Remember that was a big part for me. And and part of that is really understanding who you are and understanding your movement potential. So what I feel, what I really do feel is with traditional dance, it really supports the developmental movement patterns and it supports the expression of our inner and outer experience. It helps move the energy through our body. And sometimes I look at, you know, say West Coast dance or powwow dance, and it's always about connection to earth and sequencing movement through the body. And it and the intention around that too is always, um, like when I work with Bob Baker, and we do like the snowbird dance. You're you're shaking your hands and you're moving energy through your body, but you're also cleaning the space. You're clearing the floor. You're shooting power. You're giving thanks. So what happens in the cycle of traditional dance is is this honoring of your place in this larger cosmology. It's quite huge. And because I've never really come across a traditional dancer or a traditional dance that's about sending bad energy anywhere or, you know, being disrespectful to the earth. <laughs> like it's always about really connecting, connecting in a good way to the, um, 
the cycle that you're a part of, the world that you're a part of. And for, also for me, um, because I didn't have that that traditional dance in my community, or I didn't learn that way, then the contemporary dance became the way that I I also rediscovered it. Rediscovered it, and then also rediscovered my connection to spirit, and my connection to who I am. And, and it places me in a relationship to the divine because I do feel that traditional dance does do that. It places you in relationship to the divine and the developmental movement patterns and finding full expression to really grow and reach towards those things. So, yeah, that's kind of how um, I feel that that it's a really big thing to try to start to move through and and work through as we're working through all the different things in our lives, the challenges that have been passed on to us, the challenges that are, are our own personal challenges, that the more we inhabit our body, that we, we're given the tools to to cope and, and to um, cope in a really good way move things through so that's kind of my take on that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. are there any thoughts around that kind of questions I was having a conversation with Michelle earlier about how I was working through some of my trauma and my relationship with my mother and relatives and, and realizing, not knowing what it was, but what it was, but in an intellectual way, but my body just needed to move in certain ways, and it really helped me through. And then later, it, it helped my mind and my spirit. But it was through a totally non-intellectual way, in just a physical, feeling, emotional spiritual way moving through my body. So I'm wondering um, if anyone in the audience has had that experience of using your body to move through what makes you suffer or or to celebrate, I guess, also. Mm -hmm. To celebrate also. I think too it's one of those things even if you know you have a moment where you just want to go for a walk and you go for a walk and everything changes mm -hmm. it's kind of one of it's kind of how that happens so it's really um really it's simple it doesn't have to be yeah <laughs> I mean it's so beautiful it's so nice to see youth because <laughs> I'm old now people move in their full expression of their body it's so exciting right when you see young people do that, that have that capacity, that, mm -hmm. and as we age, it gets harder to do, but to connect to it through walking. Yeah. Or There's this great traditional dance group um, out of Whitehorse. They're the Doc Laquan dancers, and the majority of them are under 30. Really, and there's a few, um, um, like the mother is kind of the head of the thing, but they the first time I saw them, I started crying <laughs> oh. because they were young and had so much energy and so much passion, and they were in full regalia and singing and dancing their heart out. And I just, oh. it's some, probably one of the first times I've seen it in that way. So it was really, it was really beautiful. And they're a wonderful dance company um, out of Whitehorse. And, um, I'm always so thankful for for groups like that that really inspire youth to take hold of what their traditions are and just be like there's a bit of swagger with it too, right? Like it's really <laughs> it was really interesting seeing the boys after we what we did was we danced at the Olympics with them. Mm -hmm. So we did our contemporary dance piece and uh, then they did their work. And yeah, the boys just walk out in their regalia after the show and you know, just really um, strutting around, and it was like, good, <laughs> how proud they are. It's awesome. I just thought it was really, really good. So, 
Yeah. Um, just one one thing that I want to probably put forward is this idea of so of idle no more, right? This whole movement that we've been feeling across the country for a couple of years, or at least a full year now, and it was birthed out of dance. Like I know that the um, there's a few key people who started the movement. Um, I remember when it first came out and on Facebook, I thought, oh, so we're supposed to turn off our engines or something? <laughs> I thought it was like a they right. turn our cars off. But then I started to go, oh, right, we're right. not idle no more. And this idea of dance making us come together and being strong and stand up, standing up for who we are and what we believe in. So this idea of particularly the round dance, right, mm -hmm. in West Edmonton Mall and all the different malls across the country and all the different streets. Like, remember Young and Dundas? They closed it down and they had a big round dance. So that idea of really inhabiting our body is a very powerful thing. And I think um, that, for me, proves that the more we, we are in our body and, and move from it and express from it, that we can, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. So I want to do a dance workshop with Michelle. <laughs> Doesn't everyone else? Do you want Michelle to come and do a workshop with us? On my way to Dawson. On your way to Dawson. Yeah. Any but, questions or thoughts on webinar? Out there. We're on video conference. We're all good. Oh, someone's typing? Great. Did you get that question? Uh, no. Oh, here it is. We'd like to have Michelle do a workshop here in Port Hardy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, Colleen also says, I love to walk when feeling depressed and just need to collect myself. Great. Yeah. yeah. Looking after yourself. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful. Um, I have my website I'm going to put up, and then you can contact me through my website if you um, are interested in workshops. Um, we're putting workshops together but it's one of our goals to start to come out and do this work. One of the women that works with our dance company actually is in, goes to Attawapiskat. Wow. And they're, they're, she's working on a dance piece with the children at the school yes. around, because their new school is opening in September. So um, she's been doing lots of work around that. And it, it's been a very important part for us. So even though we, it's kind of, there we haven't done we haven't been able to come out and do workshops yet it's really something that we're ready to start to do um i posted can we put this up i just need to do that the whole interesting sites to visit yes page Let's see full screen can you see that okay we'll see if there's yeah so there's um, a list of Aboriginal dance and performance sites. Um, so my own Raven Spirit Dance, Kahawi Dance. It's not coming out clear at all. You haven't got the mic it on. isn't. Hey, it's probably not big enough. We can email it to you. Oh, that'd be great. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering yeah, if maybe then what's up. That way we could probably keep in touch there that if the opportunity ever does come up that you might be able to perform in our community. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or even have no. a workshop in our community. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. it's totally possible. <laughs> yeah, we could just take this down. Is that okay? Yeah, totally. okay, and we could go back since they can't see it. Yeah, we'll make sure we put it on the webpage and send it to you to Boyston and Anyone else that yeah. wants to be part of it? Uh, there's also something I didn't put on the sheet, so if you want to write it down right now, um, it's called Digital Longhouse, and that's something that came uh, that is coming out of um, 
Native Ed, Native Education Center in Vancouver. And there's some really interesting things happening on that site. So um, if you want to just make a note of that, Digital Longhouse, just Google it and it should come up under uh, Native Ed. Yeah, so I think that's um, that's about it. That's about it. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thanks for doing all that movement. It was great. <laughs> that was really nice to have that. That was awesome. <laughs> So any final comments? I want to thank you, Michelle, yeah, for thank coming. You. It was really lovely. And uh, I could have done some more dance with you, yeah. for sure. That would have been great. It feels good to get up. Thank you so much, Hoiston. And I know that, I don't know if Adams Lake is still on or some of the other communities are off. OK. And thank you, all of you, on webinar. That's fantastic. Um, thank you, Michelle, from New Chalmers. It's awesome to have you. And Colleen and others, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you from yeah, Hoisten. Thank yeah, thank Masicho. you, Hoisten. Hi, Chika. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was fun.